Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. Uh, today we're going to take a look in the Eurozone. So I've built myself a new rig here to do the camera work on. So let me know if you think it's better. should keep the camera steady and you should be able to zoom in on things and, and look at things a little bit better. Alright, so what we're going to do here is this is my European night crawlers that started as 500 cocoons in 2019 that I bought from Emily the crazy worm lady and after we did the water harvest we had two and a half pounds of European night crawlers and we started this bin now it did have the regular prepared bedding but it also had a lot of coconut core to sop up all the water that we incurred doing the water harvest if you're interested in that it's in the European night crawler as well as the uh, harvesting castings playlists. All right, so let me put you up there and then we can take a look at this. All right, as I said, this is the um, cocoon side. This was started 218 days ago in July of 2021. It has been 29 days since we've looked in on this. Now, um, this should start getting better now because it has started to warm up in the basement and it's about 67 degrees Fahrenheit in here. Last time they had a good pumpkin feeding and uh, so let's take a look and see what they are doing. Alright, so we always start down at the end that has the oldest um, feeding and see what they have accomplished to uh, keep finishing up everything. And I did watch the video this time, and I did make the comment that there were not any roly-polies. And uh, he must have heard me and said, well, I want to go join the Eurozone. And here he is. I'm also seeing springtails. I should probably have shut my mouth. But it is a little dry on top. Why am I doing that? Don't do that. And then, basically, it gets to be a really nice moisture once you get about an inch or so down. So that's good. It's also seeming like it's nice and fluffy. Um, I think that it does look a little bit farther done than um, what it probably really is simply because there was so much coconut coir used. So I'm just going to fluff this up. I don't know what that did to the camera. I'm going to fluff this up. and see what's going on down here. It's not real compacted, so that's good. Looks like I've got a avocado tree that wants to grow. Good thing that uh, totally need more avocados in Illinois. But we're getting some good sized worms here, so that's, that's nice. Because these did all start from cocoons and they were um, raised in a 10 gallon container for a couple of years and so these worms really never did get a chance to stretch out and grow to be big worms so the moisture is really nice down here this is some of that Amazon tape it is composting it is getting there now that's the black tape not the shiny uh, cello tape so just looking down here, looks like we're doing good. Got a good, you know, combination of worms in here that are different sizes. So yeah, that's good. Okay, so this is the side that, you know, should be getting closer to completion. By this summer, we should be able to harvest this. And I'll just take anything big that I find and move it to the other end. So let's start looking for that pumpkin that was fed. I'm seeing the paper because we did give it uh, three or four big pieces of pumpkin and then we did give some bedding. But that was 29 days ago so I might have too high of expectations for a worm ball. Got an avocado shell from I don't even know when. But it looks like they're doing a good job. This stuff can move over too. Um, even if we're not getting a worm ball, 
We are definitely progressing the bin. Yep, that's good. So the idea of the wedge method is to start at one end and then, you know, feed this, put the bedding here, and let them come and eat it and finish it. And then you put the next bit here, and then they come get it and eat it. And then you put more here, and then the worms are supposed to migrate continuously. That is the plan anyway. So still looking, hoping for maybe a little bit of seeing the pumpkin or a little worm ball or something. Not so much. Not yet, anyway. Moisture's looking really good down here. Seeing quite a few cocoons. Here's a nice cocoon. Probably can't catch it on film but I can see a little red stripe on the inside of that cocoon. If you uh, would like to see them under the microscope, I do have a playlist uh, for when I do get the worms under the microscope and look at the cocoons and look at the worms super up close. Uh, also have some where I show the mites and the springtails. I thought it was interesting. A lot of people, you know, don't have the ability to look at things super up close with a microscope. So it's, you know, something I find interesting. All right, so we did not find a worm ball and we did not find any food, pumpkin or anything. So we're just going to take this end part that, um, I think, there you go, that's all that's left of the pumpkin. But European nightcrawlers are really the best overall worm for me. They eat an enormous amount of food, and uh, if you want to go fishing, you can also go fishing with them. Um, if you can bear to give up your worms for uh, another hobby. All right, well, let's get these guys some food. Okay, looks like some grapes and some greens. Sometimes, after a week in the bucket, it's hard to tell what it is, but it looks like definitely some, oh, broccoli. Broccoli and greens, maybe some oranges, uh, maybe some Valentine's flowers. All right. Um, oh, yeah, there you go. That is a pomegranate. I don't think I've ever fed them pomegranates before. If you fed pomegranates to your worms before, let me know. Uh, what goes on with that? Um, do the seeds stay in there forever? Do they sprout? That'd be cool. I don't have a pomegranate tree. Okay. And then we got some pita bread. So I think that's a good, good long-term feeding. You know, they didn't wasn't anything left left after a month of that quite a bit of pumpkin. Make sure that I give them enough if we're not in here for another month. So let me get some bedding. Now this is my prepared bedding. This is uh, shredded cardboard, Amazon boxes, coconut coir, some grit, and back when it was first made it did have some liquid kelp to get the microbes going um, when I add a little bit of finished castings so that this bedding should go pretty fast. And I did give them quite a bit of bedding because that is some stinky food and I want to make sure that the gnats don't get drawn to this area. All right, so I think you can see the dividing line here. Um, this is the part that is super done. This is the part of the wedge that is progressing on. All right. Let me move you over to the northeast worms. Okay, here we are in the uh, northeast.com worms. And let's look and see what these guys are doing. This is the oldest edge. Kind of move the dry stuff down to the end so we can rehydrate it. And let's see what these guys are doing. 
So they also started this bin 218 days ago with the worms uh, from Gatano. And I had one pound of really nice, big, healthy European night crawlers. And obviously they're making babies. We are getting more one, more worms, good worms. So looking down at this end, just kind of fluffing it up, make sure it's not getting compacted. Moisture looks good. I'm uh, moving the dry stuff and then any large food particles that I'm finding in here. Because with the wedge method, the idea is to eventually harvest this end. And you don't want things that are going to take six months to a year to, to finish up. So when I'm going through it and fluffing it, then I usually will come in here and and take any big pieces out that I see. Good worm. They're seeming a little bit livelier with it being, I don't know, it's probably only five or eight degrees warmer down here, but I think that must make a difference to them because they do seem a bit more lively right now. So let's see. Yep. Um, this portion here that is mostly done definitely looks mostly done. So I'll stack that up a little bit. And I did watch the video and this bin did not get fed last time. It had an abundance of leftovers of potatoes and ginger. So we didn't feed them 29 days ago. We left them to eat the potatoes and the ginger. So let's see if we can find the leftovers here. Things like root crops, you know, can can take three or six months to, you know, fully break down. So, you know, it's not wouldn't be surprising to still see some of this stuff. The ginger is is still here and pretty pretty intact. Still smells exactly like ginger. It I wouldn't be surprised if it started growing or something. Not, haven't seen any potato. Well, I just was going to say, I haven't seen any potatoes yet. But there they are. So it's been a month since I've been in here. And so some of the potatoes they have reduced to just the potato skin. And some of them they have not gotten around to. So let's keep digging and keep moving things towards the, the finished end when it looks like they're getting somewhat finished. Yeah, the ginger's been in there two months now. Does not look like it's made a lot of progress, but those potatoes are pretty much down to the peels now. All right, still digging. kind of disrupted a bit of a worm ball wrapped around that ginger. Um, so the moisture's been doing good in here, keeping those... Uh, oop, yay, worm ball, good worms. This is why your mommy's favorite. Yes, it is. So they did a good job um, cleaning up those potatoes. I think the ginger... I don't think I've fed ginger before, so I don't, I don't, didn't really have any expectation as to what they were going to do with it. Um, so we will just keep moving that along, and we will put the leftover food in with the new food that we feed today, and we'll keep moving over this stuff that is mostly done. Kind of dig under here a little bit, see if there's any more of those potatoes. Nope. Just all the dry stuff. So we can put the dry bedding that we found on top down so that it can soak up any of the liquid from the food we're going to give them today. And we're going to give them a pretty good feeding. So they will continue to get their ginger. I'll just keep leaving it in there until they finally do eat it. I mean, that's the rule in my house. You eat what you're fed. 
Uh, so I'll put this up here too. Put that there. Anything that looks like it's finished, I'm gonna give to this part here. And then this is all dry that we scraped off the top. So let's get them some food. I think these are cranberries. Okay. I don't usually buy cranberries, so this must be from CC. Okay, let's get them some food. I don't think I've fed olives before. Let me know if you've fed olives before. What does that do? All right, so they got a healthy bunch of bedding as well. Here's something somebody had asked me is how big are these bins? So they are 33 inches long. I'll put that in metric. Uh, 21 inches wide. And at the deepest point, I suppose I could do that from the outside. The deepest point is just under a foot. So that's the dimensions of this particular bin. And then, so blue is, is twice this size, but the same height and width. All right, so this is the uh, European Nightcrawlers. They have their own playlist, and uh, I will link that below. If you like this video, please give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.